We've all heard that the real estate market is nuts right now. What's driving this hot market? How long will it last? And should I be buying or selling? Are the most common questions I get asked every day by homeowners and investors. I'll try to make sense of the data and explore the reasons behind what's happening out there in our monthly market speed report. It's no secret that the Greater Vancouver housing market has had one of the best Augusts in recorded history with sales volume up by more than 50% and house prices on average 11% higher compared to this time last year. Townhouses and condos being the exception only having gone up about 9%. And this is all happening during one of the worst quarterly economic downturns we've ever seen in Canada with Q2 GDP dropping by 38.7%. Comment below if you'd like to see future videos on GDP, how it's measured and how it impacts the real estate market. So what's driving this hot real estate market? How long will it last? And should you be buying or selling right now? Let's dive right in. Although I'll aim to be as thorough as possible in this video without putting you all to sleep, it isn't possible to cover all the factors that may impact your situation. Remember that market data and market conditions that impact the market on aggregate one way may impact your real estate goals in a completely different way. I always like to break down a hot market into two subcategories, activity and price. You can have a hot market if only one of these is up. For example, lots of sales while prices stay relatively the same is considered a hot market. Similarly, price increases while the number of units sold stays the same is also considered a hot market. In the case of August, both the number of sales and the prices of units sold went up. Now we can attribute August's double hot market to a few factors, namely the borrowing rates, the prominent emergence of a work from home workforce, and changes in home requirements. Mortgage rates are closely correlated to government bond yields and the spread impacts what you and I get charged by the bank for our mortgage. In August of 2019, the average five-year fixed mortgage rate was about 3.6%. So someone buying a $1 million home and putting 20% down would have a mortgage of roughly $4,040 a month. Fast forward to August 2020 and you can get that exact same fixed mortgage at 1.9%. That would effectively make your monthly payment for that same $1 million home $3,350 a month. That's a drop of $650 a month or 17%. Now this is important because people don't make purchases, they make payments when buying a home. And what I mean by that is a drop in monthly carrying costs pushes up the demand as all of a sudden people can afford a home they previously couldn't. Another impact of lower carrying costs is that for the same monthly payment of $4,040 a month, someone who would have been able to purchase a $1 million house in 2019 can now buy a $1.2 million house today. So long as they had an extra $40,000 to cover the additional down payment lying around. Now for some buyers, this has allowed them to buy homes previously out of their price range and buyers took full advantage of the lower rates and entered the market in force and a lot faster than sellers did, pushing inventory levels down. Increased buying power, increased demand, and lower inventory levels all contributed to the 11% increase in prices. Prices would have to go up another 4-6% to before a buyer's buying power would be comparable to what it was this time last year. Now lenders have been very cautious of this and lending guidelines have tightened up dramatically over the last few months. But for highly qualified buyers, the current market conditions mean cheaper carrying costs and more options even after taking into account the recent price increases. Now just because things are cheaper doesn't necessarily fully explain why someone who already owns a home would want to sell and buy in a time where there's a lot of uncertainty in our economic future. Buying and selling real estate is a relatively expensive thing to do and for those who are also living in the home, it's a very disruptive thing to go through. So there has to be more to it than just lower interest rates for people who own their home. This is where changes in the working environment of some industries are beginning to affect the real estate market. As more and more companies offer a permanent work from home position, Homeowners previously constrained by the commute times are now finding themselves free to move to areas farther away from city centers. Families living in a townhouse in Vancouver can sell and buy a house with a yard and a mortgage helper farther out without taking on very much debt, if any at all. 
Another major reason sellers are entering the market has to do with the way we use our home. With the new world of COVID-19, the amount of time we spend at home has increased dramatically for most people. Homeowners all of a sudden find themselves needing more entertaining space, more work space, more backyard space, and just more space in general. This has either accelerated the timelines for buying a new home or for some families created a need they previously never had. Upsizing has become a definite driving factor in people's decision to sell and buy in this market. This is one of the questions I get asked a lot by homeowners and investors, and it's not an easy one to answer. Everything happening right now is unprecedented, and so are the government responses to it and the public's responses to it. With historically low interest rates here to stay, at least until mid next year, and with most Canadians maintaining a positive economic outlook for what's to come, we at the Mansour Real Estate Group suspect that the demand for housing will continue to remain strong at least until the end of 2020. And this all brings us to what you should do if you've been thinking of potentially buying or selling real estate. And the answer is, it depends. Your housing type, location, whether it's an investment property or not, your equity and your holding costs all play a factor in figuring out what the best course of action is for you. This is why it's so important for you to reach out to a trusted professional realtor who can help you navigate your options. If you don't have one, give us a call and let me and my team show you why so many people turn to us for their real estate needs. If you wanna chat about anything in this video or have any questions regarding the real estate market, feel free to comment below or reach out to us directly. This is Mohammed with the Mansur Real Estate Group wishing you and your loved ones health and safety during these interesting times.